Whether they're plowing into bridges, shearing other boats into, or simply the victim of wildly inadequate captains, there's no shortage of ways boats can end up getting into nautical nonsense. The best part is, there's often somebody nearby to capture and share these moments of stupidity with the world. So grab those life vests and get ready to abandon ship because we're catching a ride in unworthy vessels large and small alike with some of the biggest idiots in boats ever caught on camera. Small Boats, Big Idiots Let's launch our nautical adventure with some big blunders in little boats. While rowing teams need plenty of brawn, it seems they're not so insistent on the brains department. Case in point, the number seven seat here had the bright idea to reposition mid-race. Let's watch. I sure hope that guy's not on a rowing scholarship. While he proved to be the only idiot in his team, this next clip shows an entire team that seemed to have been afflicted with the slapstick curse. <laughs> Not a great start, guys. Moving up to a slightly larger category of small boat now, we have this truly disastrous scene of houseboat shenanigans. <laughs> that doesn't look good. Let's take a look at how this unfolded on the inside. We, we, they're coming to fix us with a pump first. Jimmy. I don't know what you're talking about. Jimmy. Jimmy. We're, I think we're okay, but yes. Oh my gosh. Uh, how is this even happening? <laughs> Coast Guard's following us, right? Did we find the life jackets? Oh, no, they're good. Andre, Help! I think you just hold that door the rest of the time. Uh, I haven't got out. We're straight. Oh, dear. Not sure what's going on exactly. We just started driving out, but as you can see, we've taken on a little bit of water here. <laughs> That's the spirit. They say avoiding panic is as crucial in a precarious scenario, but these guys seem far too relaxed considering they're literally sinking. Luckily for them, the Coast Guard arrived just in time, saving the cheerful souls aboard and towing the unworthy vessel back to shore. Moving on, this next clip shows the results of what I can only imagine was a dog version of that scene from the movie Captain Phillips. Look at me, sure. I'm the captain now. That's right. These German shepherds are clearly experienced sailor. Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh no! Oh shoot! Oh shoot indeed! Hopefully their owner realized that committing to the joke is less important when you're sailing a boat. Those pooches were quickly relieved of duty, but I have to wonder, who's going to take the keys from this dinosaur? Well, he may look kind of goofy, but he's just having fun. Sometimes idiots in boats don't even need to be in a boat. Sometimes you can just tell they've been there. Like this unoccupied boat found spinning in circles. We all know an idiot's been there, but who? I suspect the dinosaur. Or like when you see a pontoon boat floating downstream unoccupied, you know some silly sailor somewhere is looking for where they parked their boat. But good luck finding it after this. Hey, I better stay back probably. The boat looks fine, I guess, as long as you ignore the collapsed pontoon encasement. Farewell, boat. Sailing unrestricted by humans to parts unknown. 
Last I heard, the boat moved to Costa Rica, bought a house, and now goes by Felipe the Tractor. Good luck, Felipe. You know who else will change their name and move to Costa Rica? Me. Unless you press that subscribe button. And why not tickle that thumbs up, too? You'll make an old sea captain very happy. You're back to the waves, then, landlubbers. So we've established it's difficult to know where you're going when your captains are dogs or when there is no captain. As per this next clip, things get even worse when you're being towed. Roll the clip, buddy. Here's a pro tip for all the boatiots out there. Towing a boat at speed over an 8.8 .8 ton piece of steel is not okay. This, this is, is not okay. Silly sailors just don't think things through though. Like this dizzying donut whose first thought on seeing a whirlpool was, gotta get a closer look for the gram. This crazy location known as the Devil's Hole Whirlpool is found off Dent Island in British Columbia, Canada. Like most whirlpools, it's the product of two opposite strong currents raging against each other, and it's not something you want to risk flipping your boat inside of. Because trust me, you ain't getting out. This next pair of distinguished sailors teach us the importance of using the right-sized boat. I don't think these, this boat on her like sea lines anymore. Oh my gosh, it's so close to sinking. If that thing weighs, if that thing eats three more salmon, it's done for. <laughs> <laughs> Might be time for an upgrade, fellas. But this bunch of boaters found themselves teetering over the water's edge, but with much less control. After renting an electric-powered four-seater boat on Austin, Texas's Lady Bird Lake, they carelessly drifted too far, winded up dangling over Longhorn Dam. The authorities received multiple 911 calls about a boat teetering on the precipice of the dam, with the currents threatening to drag it down to the Texan equivalent of David Jones's locker. Thankfully, a lake patrol boat manned by Austin police quickly arrived and towed the nautically challenged crew back to port. To be fair to the boys in blue, ramps seem to be a bit of a recurring problem for boating simpletons. <laughs> Oof, that doesn't look or sound good. But even when exiting the water, ramps still managed to prove problematic for some marine enthusiasts. Dude, I got that all. Ouch. With a paint job like that, there's no hiding those scratches. Let's return to some boating brainlessness from the police now. Check this out. Oh, bad boat, parking cop guy, what you gonna do? Great job at keeping those other cops ready for anything, though. Doesn't matter if you're jumping off a boat or steering a ferry, having a sense of direction is key. It doesn't work, however, if you're asleep. Sounds simple, but for one dunce of a sleepy Norwegian ferry captain, staying awake proved impossible, resulting in this footage filmed by a passenger. The captain is drunk. Luckily, no one was hurt due to this incredible idiocy, except the captain's pride and presumably the emotional damage to the owner of the boat when they watched the footage. Oh. 
By contrast to the straight-up tomfoolery we've seen so far, sometimes there's a fine line between idiot and genius. This is Hemocraft, the most ingenious idiotic idea I've ever seen. If someone suggested adding hammocks to my kayak, I'd laugh, but boy am I glad the founders don't listen to naysayers like me. I gotta admit, it looks like a great way to hang around. Assuming it doesn't flip and rapidly end your relaxation. On that note, people seem to love turning things that shouldn't be boats into boats. Take this water truck, road boat, whatever this is, it's another idiotic genius idea. This next clip, however, returns us safely to the realms of definite idiots. No geniuses here, just an Australian man hitching a ride on some floodwaters. It shouldn't have to be said, folks, but don't mess around with floodwaters. There won't always be a kindly neighbor around to pull you back out. We're really getting into small boat idiot of the year winter territory now. Another runner-up is this small boat with sky-high dreams. Oh, bud, you're not a jet ski, remember? If someone tells you to shoot for the moon, don't do that. And more importantly, don't do this. Ah, the simple pleasures are the best. When you're pulling off dumb activities on the water, I suggest getting a drone to film it for the rest of us to enjoy. Though it seems even drones can cause shenanigans. Dropping an expensive drone in the water sucks, but how about dropping your entire engine? They're going to need a hefty rod to fish that out. Moving on to some slightly lengthier vessels now. If you know about canals, you'll know that canal locks are an important part of a waterway. They enable boats to quickly travel between different levels of land, separate tidal and non-tidal sections of rivers, and are used in many places as flood protection. Many locks are unstaffed, meaning the public is allowed to operate them, and of course, that includes the more impulsive boat users. Just like the co-skipper of the La Primavera, a Dutch freighter that sails the canals of Europe. Back in 2023, the helmswoman, who was later described by police as being properly intoxicated, rammed her 360-foot cargo ship headfirst into the giant Ifutzium lock gates on the Rhine River in Germany. The brazenly irresponsible act caused an estimated $1.6 million worth of damage. What's worse, the section of the river was a busy trade route and was reduced to only one gate and would remain that way for a full year as the replacement gates needed to be custom-built. The amusing part was the boat was virtually undamaged and is still in operation today. There's just something about letting anyone operate a giant boat that seems a recipe for disaster. Whether they're ramming, jamming, or tilting, there's always space for idiots in boats to mess up and get caught on camera. This lovely boat is the Abigail, an English narrow boat that somehow ended up at a 40 degree angle in 2008 after, well, there are conflicting opinions on how. The boat's occupants claim their barge got caught on a brick sticking out just far enough to catch and hold their boat up. British Waterways, which was at the time a government-owned corporation in charge of managing Britain's waterways, claimed there was no evidence of loose or protruding bricks, but didn't specify what caused it. My money's on that T-Rex <laughs> being back up to his old mischievous tricks. We'll stay in England for a minute longer with a similar tale, but way dumber. So dumb, in fact, that I have to rank these guys as our small boat big idiot category winner. 
This perplexing scene was the aftermath of a bachelor party, the backstory of which cops were left to piece together. Turns out the group had rented several boats and subsequently got absolutely wasted. After crashing their main narrow boat vessel into another boat in the dead of night and having the cops called on them, they continued their waterway rampage maneuvering into a canal lock where they somehow sank the boat. By the time emergency services arrived, the boat was completely underwater and the chaotic crew had abandoned ship, piling into another of the boats they'd hired to continue their booze cruise. Sounds like the potentially serious implications of the escapades hadn't quite sunk in. In all seriousness, though, folks, please don't ever operate boats or any vehicles drunk. It's never worth the enormous risks. All agreed? All right, then. Let's take things up a notch. Ginormous Boats, Massive Idiots To become captain of a huge boat, you're going to need a shipload of experience and training. But even experienced captains can be idiots. The difference is their actions are far more consequential. I mean, you'd think that the person in charge of a boat like this, the $120 million ecstasy super yacht, would know what they're doing. Well, this is that very boat pulling into Simpson Bay Bridge Harbor. Yeah, great job, Captain. There goes the office. If you thought that was bad, the next clip is even worse. Watching these two ships slowly move towards each other is the most infuriating thing ever. Where are the captains? <laughs> Alright, let's speed this up slightly. Sheesh, what a crew of nincompoops. It's a miracle no one was injured. But even that's not as bad as this next shipping mishap. Like here, the sheer power needed to do this is off the charts. The 754-foot ship, which was reportedly traveling far too fast for the busy, shallow shipping lane it was traveling in, plowed into this pair of smaller barges at nine knots. The impact propelled the attached tugboat backwards and tore an enormous triangular chunk out of the first barge, resulting in a catastrophic 11,000 barrels of chemicals spilling out into the water an error which cost $15 million in cleanup and repairs. If the ship was moving any faster, it would have torn the barge in half. And guess who the plowing ship is owned by? Yep, K-Line again. At this rate, they'll have to rebrand to L-Line soon. In another major L move, as this beautifully decorated ship was launched, it quickly became clear that an idiot was involved during its launch calculations. Yeesh. It's likely this wobbling ship was assembled top-heavy or with insufficient internal ballast tanks to weigh down the base and help its stability. Seems like the designers spent a little too much time on the decor. In a similar vein, Florida-based Carnival Cruises' ambition to prioritize operating the cheapest cruises in the world seems to have come at the cost of quality. As if we're living in a sitcom, the $11 a day cruise caught fire, causing part of its exhaust funnel to come crashing down on the deck 10. Presumably, their more premium cruises come with a no-flame guarantee. But hey, 11 bucks is 11 bucks. Now, in Carnival's defense, this fire was reportedly caused by a lightning strike, but I'm not letting them off idiot-free just yet. 
Why? Because both ships in this outrageous clip are owned by Carnival. Talk about sticking your nose where it's not wanted. Carnival is no stranger to accidents like this and has a pretty comprehensive list of accidents going back decades. Maybe it's time to reassess the captains they're hiring. Unbelievably, we're not even close to done with our big ship bigger idiots. This is the Fu Yuan Yu Ling 999, a Chinese fishing vessel infamously impounded for being caught with 6,620 sharks illegally poached from Ecuador's waters. A few years later, the ship crashed through an Ecuadorian port bridge. <laughs> Was it accidental or payback? Official sources suggest the captain lost control, but I'll let you decide. What is clear is that crashing into bridges seems to happen much more than you'd expect. But if you'll believe me, there's one more ship out there that easily beats out any of the seafaring idiocy we've seen so far. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you... The Biggest Idiot of the High Seas The BMA's Biggest Idiot of the High Seas Award goes to Captain Avranis for this ludicrous tale of incompetence and cowardice. Let's begin. This is the MTS Oceanus cruise ship or at least it's a photo of it back in its younger, more successful years, before the accident. It was a late winter evening in 1991 aboard the doomed Greek-owned French-built MTS Oceanus. The vessel was 40 years old and far from seaworthy when she left the South African port of East London, destined for Durban, another South African port just up the wild coast. She had been severely neglected over the years and had set sail with a four-inch hole in a supposedly watertight bulkhead among various other maintenance issues. A short while into her thousand-mile journey, a terrible storm descended from the heavens. Forty-knot winds and thirty-foot swells knocked the old vessel around. At 9.30 p.m., the disaster truly began. A muffled explosion was heard throughout the ship. Water had gotten in, shorting the generators and blowing the engines. She was now adrift without power, sinking at the mercy of the storm. Check valves, a mechanism designed to stop water flowing back through the ship's pipes, had been scrapped and not replaced back in port. So every toilet and shower suddenly began overflowing with dark, ice-cold water. The captain and crew panicked and the blind began leading the blind. The crew failed to seal any portholes, failed to raise an alarm, and quickly packed their bags and piled into lifeboats. The cowardly officers and main crew escaped in near-empty lifeboats without telling more than a small handful of passengers, and the skipper, Captain Avranas, was nowhere to be found. The ship then tipped heavily on one side, leaving half the lifeboats useless. By the time the last working lifeboat left, 220 people were left stranded on board. By this point, everyone had noticed something was very wrong. With no crew to turn to, the entertainers and cooks took it upon themselves to lead the evacuation. No one had any training, but they weren't going to let anyone die. Two brave performers played music to calm the frightened passengers in the lounge while a guitarist, Moss Hills, rushed through the dark, uneven ship towards the bridge for help. However, when the heroic entertainer finally reached the bridge, it was completely deserted. In a desperate attempt to seek help, he found the radio and made frantic mayday calls. A passing container ship, the Ned Lloyd Mauritius, heard the cry. Their skipper, Captain Detmar, immediately responded. This is their conversation. Where are you? I don't really know. Somewhere between East London and Durban? Can you give me your actual position? No. What is your rank? I'm the guitarist. What are you doing on the bridge? There's nobody else here. Hills later explained that at this point, Captain Detmar became extremely supportive over the radio and began giving Hills technical advice. 
In what must have felt like days, the hours slowly ticked by. As they did, the ship sank deeper into the depths, defiantly raising its nose into the sky as it did. As the sun began to rise and the deck slowly transformed into a vertical monstrosity, rescue finally arrived. A contingency from the South African Navy swept into sight along with a fleet of South African Air Force Puma helicopters. At this point, Captain Avranas finally reappeared after having reportedly locked himself in his cabin to cower in fear during the chaos. When he heard rescue vehicles arriving, multiple eyewitnesses report that the captain pushed his way in front of elderly passengers, demanding that he be airlifted to safety first. Later, he tried claiming he needed to get to shore to coordinate the rescue and was even recorded saying this. When I order abandon the ship, as a matter of time, I leave. Abandon is for everybody. If some people like to stay, they can stay. Real nice, Captain. Real nice. While the captain fled, Hills, Julia Butler, the ship's magician, other entertainers, and the cooks made sure every last soul made it off the ship, insisting they were the last ones to go. While different eyewitness accounts of the event's details vary quite a bit, there's no doubt that this became one of the most successful maritime rescues in history thanks to the valiant entertainers and cooks. No thanks to the biggest idiot in a boat I've ever encountered, and indeed the winner of the BMA's Biggest Idiot of the High Seas Award, Captain Avranas. Congratulations, Captain. You really should be ashamed of yourself. Have you ever seen or been an idiot in a boat? Feel free to share any tales of idiocy on the high seas of your own down in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.